Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rusties and Reads. So recently on my channel I've been doing kind of a book of the month series where in addition to the book of the month predictions that I've been putting up on a monthly basis I've also been doing some other book of the month inspired videos here and there. And so this is currently the last one that I want to do in this series for the moment. But basically what I want to do is I want to go through all of the books that I've purchased myself from book of the month that are still available that are my favorites so that you could potentially add them to your next box if you haven't already done so and you are a subscriber to book of the month. Now there are a lot of great books still available on book of the month so I'm just going to kind of pare them down based on my ultimate positive feelings. Because there are so many books that I'm going to be talking to you about today I'm not actually going to be going in depth about any of these synopses but I might mention a little bit about why I actually really love the book. So let's go ahead and talk about some amazing book of the month books that are still available for you to add to your box. All right so let's go ahead and start with historical fiction because I feel like that's going to be the biggest category. There are a lot of my favorites still available on book of the month starting of course with the Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. You all know how I feel about Kristen Hanna. She's one of my favorite authors of all time. She's incredible about character driven stories. Most of her books in recent times have been historical in nature and so there is always a well researched historical aspect to it. So The Nightingale is a World War II historical fiction but also available on Book of the Month at this time is The Great Alone which is set in 1970s Alaska. And what I really loved about this story is the atmosphere because you can just feel the isolation, the desperation, the desolation especially because of the situation that the family within this story finds themselves in. I highly recommend both The Nightingale and The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna if you are looking for some spectacular historical fiction. Of course I could not also do this video without recommending The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm not going to say anything more about this book. If you have been a part of the online bookish community for any length of time you all know what this book is about and it absolutely deserves all the hype it gets. It's one of my favorite books of all time and I have gushed about it quite enough here on my channel but if you have not already gone ahead and done so and picked this book up please add it to your next book of the month box. I promise you that you will not regret reading this book or basically probably any Taylor Jenkins Reid. There are other Taylor Jenkins Reid novels still available on Book of the Month as well like Malibu Rising and Daisy Jones and the Six, both of which of course I highly recommend as well. You cannot go wrong with Taylor Jenkins Reid or Kristen Hanna in my opinion. Another great recommendation that has certainly been making the rounds and getting all the buzz is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Now I'm going to say that the reason that I loved this book was not because of the plot because there really isn't any and it's not even because of the characters although some of the characters were fantastic including the dog 630. Yes the dog is named 630 but what was really fantastic to me about this story was its quotability. This is focused around a female chemist in the 1950s and the 1960s and you can just imagine the type of obstacles and sexism that she faced during this time and the position in which she finds herself after she was unceremoniously fired from her science job because she was pregnant. And so I just feel like there were a lot of really important messages in here, a lot of great quotes that I still think about and it's very rare even though I do appreciate really good quotes. There are very few times when I actually stop and take note of the quotes like actually write them down and I did that several times in this story. And so that's why I recommend it so highly because it was well written. I loved a lot of the characters in here and I absolutely loved a lot of the messages and the way that Bonnie Garmus phrased everything. So this is certainly one that I will recommend. It definitely is character driven. It is slow burning and not a lot of plot is happening in here but I feel what drives it are certainly the characters in this story. So that is why I'm going to recommend it to you here today. Moving on into romance. If you've been around my channel since the beginning of this year you will know how much I absolutely adore Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. It is one of my favorite books of 2023 and one of my favorite romances of all time. Abby Jimenez just knows how to write male love interests and she also really knows how to write a romance that is solid and harder hitting that can deal with some sensitive topics. And so if you are looking for your next favorite romance I highly recommend Part of Your World. Beach Read and The People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry are also available on Book of the Month. Emily Henry has definitely been making the rounds and she is a lot of people's go-to favorite romance author. Her books are often filled with incredibly snarky banter and that's one of the things that I absolutely love about Emily Henry. I actually really enjoyed The People We Meet on Vacation more than Beach Read. The People We Meet on Vacation is actually a friends to lovers romance and I thought that it was one of the best friends to lovers romances I have ever read. Her newer releases, Book Lovers, which is my personal favorite, and Happy Place, which I haven't read, are not on Book of the Month. Otherwise, I would probably also want to recommend one of those to you as well. But based on what is still available, I don't think you can really go wrong with either one. The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood is also still available on Book of the Month, as are Love on the Brain and Love Theoretically, which is her newest release. Now, I'm specifically mentioning Love Hypothesis because that is the one that I love the most. I haven't read her newest release but I can say that Love on the Brain didn't do much for me but Love Hypothesis is possibly one of the best fake dating romances that I've ever read. So if you love fake dating and you haven't actually read The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood, highly highly recommend. I'm also going to recommend One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. That is not a book that I hear talked about very often but it was a surprising five-star read for me because again I loved a lot of the messages that it had particularly regarding body positivity and fat shaming. This is about a plus-size fashion 
blogger who has a pretty decent sized following and she loves watching this reality TV show that's very similar to The Bachelor. But she actually calls out this show for the lack of diversity, not just in terms of racial ethnicity, but also in terms of body type. She calls them out and so she is actually offered an opportunity to go on that show to be the next Bachelorette basically and it goes from there and it's about all of the guys that she meets and all of the experiences that she has and how some of the guys actually shun her because she is a fat girl and some of the commentary that she gets and it's just amazing how people think that they have the right to comment on other people's bodies. This is one that I wrote a very thorough and in-depth review about because I just loved the overall message of the story and I loved the characters in here especially some of the guys that she meets and this is one like I said was a very surprising five stars for me. I was not expecting to love this as much as I did but it really hit home for me and so if that sounds like something you would be interested in I highly highly recommend. There is currently only one Colleen Hoover available on Book of the Month. It is probably one of her most popular releases and that is It Ends With Us. This is a story that follows domestic violence so please be aware of those trigger warnings before you go in. This is not my favorite Colleen Hoover but it is still a solid read. I'm gonna be honest I find a lot of her reads to be a very solid read even though she seems to be a very controversial author in the eyes of a lot of people but I don't have that problem so I will always recommend Colleen Hoover freely. So if you want to read Colleen Hoover if you've been wanting to get into Colleen Hoover It Ends With Us might be a great place to start. And of course I also have to recommend The Kiss Quotient because that is another top romance of all time that follows our main character Stella who is on the autism spectrum. She has high functioning autism. She's very very good with numbers and her job. She's an incredibly capable and smart human being but she's not really smart in the ways of love and social relationships and definitely not in sex. So she hires a male escort to kind of teach her in the ways of love and sex and it's actually their romance as they start to fall for each other and I just thought it was so so well done. It was handled very respectfully. I absolutely loved the main love interest in there and how patient and slow he was with Stella and willing to just take his time and do everything right with her. The other two companion novels in that series The Bride Test and The Heart Principle are also available on Book of the Month still. I don't think those were nearly as strong as The Kiss Quotient. I didn't really enjoy either one of them very much but The Kiss Quotient is chef's kiss perfection. All right y'all apparently I lied because romance was way bigger than historical fiction. Um, There's a lot of historical fiction still available on Book of the Month that I haven't read yet and so I didn't really feel like I could talk about it but the romance category is definitely on point. In the fantasy category there's just one that I really want to recommend and it is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab and it follows our main character Addie LaRue. I think when this book starts it's in like the 1700s in France and Addie LaRue is kind of set to go on the traditional way for a woman in those times. She's going to be married off and that's not what she wants. She wants freedom and so she's kind of out there pleading towards the god. She's like please whoever is listening somebody come help me and of course a god does come help her and grants her wish to be completely free but there are some caveats to this. Addie LaRue is going to live forever and even though she's going to live forever absolutely nobody is going to remember her. So if she is talking to a person and they turn their back on her and turn back around they're not going to know who she is and they're not going to remember her. She has no ability to forge lasting relationships so as you can imagine that it's a very very lonely existence until one day she goes into a bookshop and she's been in there before and the person who works there remembers her and so it's kind of about their developing relationship and finding out why he actually remembers her what is so special about him that he can remember her and I just thought that this was so extremely beautifully written. It was not to a caliber that I ever read from Victoria Schwab before and I just thought it was so amazingly beautiful so it's just an amazing story overall and of course this is definitely one that I would say give a shot if you're interested. I am not a big literary fiction person and indeed there really aren't very many literary fictions still available on book of the month that I have read or have any interest in but of course there is one notable book on here that I'm going to have to recommend because literally everybody loves it. It's Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I have very complicated feelings on this book. I was so excited to read it because it had been getting such buzz and I'd been wanting to read Gabrielle Zevin for a while and indeed when I started the story I thought it was beautifully written. However this book took a turn in the latter half that I really didn't like and I really really hated one of the main characters and that kind of ruined the story for me but like I said so many people love this story and regardless of whether or not you like the main characters or the direction that it headed it was still a very hard-hitting poignant story about friendship and the complications that come from a lifelong friendship. There's also a lot about gaming in here and game creation which I thought was really interesting really fascinating and so if you really enjoy character driven stories I think that Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow could be a good one to check out. I have two recommendations from the contemporary fiction category and one is All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. Now I will say that this book covers some very heavy and disturbing topics but it is done in such a remarkably beautiful manner. This follows our main character Wavy and at the start of the story she's maybe only six years old and she doesn't have the best family. Her dad is some kind of drug runner. Her mom is very neglectful and, and so Wavy is like the sole adult in that family and then she sees a guy that works for her dad Kellen wipe out on his motorcycle. She goes to him, she helps him and it develops a relationship between the two. Now at the start it's more like a father-daughter relationship because Kellen kind of realizes that Wavy is not really being taken care of and so he starts to take care of her. At the start of the story I believe he's in his early 20s so there's about I would say like a 14 to 15 year 
our age difference. But then over the next few years, it starts to turn into something more. It starts to turn into an actual sexual relationship. Now, the reason why I say this is dark and disturbing is because the sexual aspect of the story starts when Wavy is only 14 and Kellen is in his late 20s at this time. But like I said, it was done in a very beautiful way, done so in a way that you actually root for Kellen and Wavy. You realize that Kellen is a really good man and Wavy loves him and he loves her and you're really rooting for their relationship. It was just such a fantastically beautiful story. And if you think you can handle the subject matter, I cannot recommend this one enough. The next one is actually one that I read very, very recently and it's called The Collected Regrets of Clover by Mickey Brammer. And this follows Clover who is a death doula. And so it is her entire job to kind of help usher people into their death. But Clover herself is a very, very lonely human being. She's 36 years old. She's never been in a romantic relationship. She has never been kissed. The only person that she really loved in the world was her grandfather who helped raise her, but he died 13 years prior to the start of the story. And she's just kind of living there alone in the apartment that she shared with her grandfather. And she really doesn't have anybody else. And so this is kind of her story as she's going out there and she's making friends and she's making something of her life while also being a death doula. And so there's a lot of really hard hitting commentary about death. It really makes you think about your own life and how you're living it. And I just thought it was remarkably well done. Obviously very character driven. It has some vibes to like Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine by Gail Honeyman, which is actually also available on Book of the Month. So if you have not read either one of the stories, I would definitely recommend. Like I said, these are very character driven stories. So if you don't like character studies, you're probably not going to like the books. But I definitely found The Collected Regrets of Clover a very well worth it story, especially for Clover's own journey. So I'm going to recommend that one as well. Moving into the horror category, this is where a lot of Riley Sager's books are. So of course, I'm going to recommend him to you, particularly Home Before Dark and The Last Time I Lied. Those are my two favorite Riley Sagers. Home Before Dark definitely has that haunted house kind of aspect. And I think he did it really well. So if that sounds interesting to you, definitely jump on it, especially if you are looking for a place to start with Riley Sager. Don't start with Final Girls, y'all, because that was a trash fire. Start with Home Before Dark. I also could not do this video without recommending No Exit by Taylor Adams, which is one of my favorite thrillers of all time, especially the wintry isolation aspect of this. Taylor Adams did atmosphere so fantastically well in this story, and I cannot, cannot recommend this one enough. And another one that I cannot recommend enough is The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. This was the first ever Simone St. James that I ever read, and I flew through this book in 24 hours. Simone St. James typically has ghosts in her stories, and The Sundown Motel is no different. This follows our main character who is on the hunt to figure out what happened to her aunt 30 years prior. It's an aunt she's never met, but her aunt disappeared in the early 80s from the Sundown Motel where she was working as an overnight clerk, and now her niece is set out to find out what happened to her. There's a past perspective, a present perspective, and it was just so phenomenally done. I loved everything about this story from start to finish. It was a good time, compulsively readable, and this is definitely another one that I recommend highly. In the sci-fi category, I definitely would recommend The Martian by Andy Weir. I'm sure that y'all have heard of The Martian because it's about 10 years old at this point, and it has certainly had a lot of popularity. This is basically the survival story of Mark Watney, who is accidentally left on Mars after his crew presumes that he is dead. And so this is all about the stuff that he has to go through on Mars to survive, as well as what the people on Earth back at NASA are doing trying to rescue him from Mars. I actually recently read this. I think it was in April or May that I read this. And ultimately, it was a good time. It wasn't my favorite overall. I definitely recommend listening to this on audiobook if you can, because Will Wheaton narrates it, and I think he does a really great job. And I think it would be a little bit too dry, even with Mark Watney's humor, if you didn't listen to it, because there is a lot of math and science. I am also going to recommend Lake Crouch in general. I've only read Dark Matter and Recursion, and I enjoyed them both. Now, his books are not typically ones that I gravitate towards just because they are extremely fast-paced and, of course, very, very sciencey. But again, you don't need to really know all of the science in order to understand the book. But my problem with the Blake Crouch novel is that it is so fast-paced that you're not getting any really complex character development or anything like that, which is what I'm looking for in the story. So if you're looking for a fast-paced, good, fun time, something that you're going to be able to binge through, Blake Crouch is definitely a good option for that. Moving on into the mystery category, there is not necessarily a whole heck and ton. There are a couple of Ruth Ware books on here that I would recommend, primarily One by One and The It Girl. Now, I know Ruth Ware is not for everybody. She is definitely a more slow burn mystery writer. You're very much in the main character's head. You are hearing all of her thoughts, all of her feelings as she is working through absolutely everything. And so there is definitely a slow build right up until the end. I personally find Ruth Ware's books very entertaining, very engaging, and she has me all the way up until the very end. One by One is definitely in Agatha Christie style. And then there were none situation where you have a group of co-workers who are trapped at a French chalet because of a snowstorm. Of course, they have no electricity, no phones, and it is their survival story as they keep dying one by one, hence the title. I actually really enjoyed that one a lot, especially the reveal at the end. That's probably one of my favorites of Ruth Ware's. And the It Girl by Ruth Ware is more of a dark academia take. And I thought she did a pretty decent job of it, in all honesty. It is definitely better than some of the other dark academia books that I have read. Highly recommend Ruth Ware in general, but primarily these two as they are available still 
on book of the month. And then finally moving on into the thriller category, one that I see that's available that really caught my eye to recommend to you is The Collective by Alison Galen. This was my first Alison Galen. I was not expecting to enjoy this one as much as I did and it really did engage me from start to finish. Another compulsively readable story in my opinion. This is about a mother who lost her child tragically five years prior and the police always thought her death was an accident but the mother never believed that. The mother always believed that a young privileged boy was responsible for her daughter's death. And then one night when she kind of loses her cool she ends up going viral and she comes to the attention of The Collective which is a group of mothers just like herself who lost their children tragically and never feel like they got justice and so they take justice and vengeance into their own hands. And I just thought it was extremely clever, very well written, especially how they go about perpetrating their crimes. It was phenomenal. And then the ending, I did not see coming the way that she ended it. It was definitely unexpected, at least in my opinion. So this is certainly one that I would recommend. I also want to recommend First Born by Will Dean. This is another one that came out of left field and surprised me. I was not expecting to love this one nearly as much as I did. This is the story about two twins and one twin is currently living in New York. The other one is back home in London and the twin in New York is brutally murdered. And the twin from London decides to fly out to New York to help solve the murder. And there were two pretty big twists in here that I did not see coming. And it now has made Will Dean kind of an auto by author for me. I actually recently bought a backlist title of his from Book Outlet because I'm just so interested to see what he's able to do. And he has a new release coming out soon that I'm highly anticipating as well. So this is certainly one that I wanted to recommend because this one really snuck up out of left field and was a great thriller that I was not expecting. I also of course have to recommend The Wife Between Us by Sarah Buchanan and Greer Hendricks. This was their debut novel as a pair I believe and I just really enjoyed this one. This is one that had a twist like smack dab in the middle of the story and when it was revealed this is another situation where I was just like I stopped and I was listening to it on audio and I kind of had to backtrack on audio to make sure I actually understood what was happening because it was so crazy and I wasn't expecting it. This is one where you go in expecting one thing because obviously the wife between us you know you're expecting a woman who has been cheated on and there's another woman and some sinister things are happening and it is but it also is not that and so this is kind of one that I recommend going into a little bit blind so I'm not going to say anything more about it. I just thought that this was a good time. You still can get some of their other books on book of the month at this time but I would highly recommend starting with this one if you have not read from this duo before. Two Karen Slaughter books are available. Pieces of Her and Girl Forgotten. Now y'all know how I feel about Karen Slaughter. For the most part in my eyes I feel like she is the thriller queen. She's so gritty, gruesome, and dark and she's not afraid to put her characters through some shit so I will always read everything that she writes. But Pieces of Her is probably the worst book that I've ever read by her. I absolutely hated it. Not necessarily because the story was bad. In fact, the story was pretty good overall and it held a lot of promise. It's because I absolutely hated the main character with a passion because she was so useless. I've never met such a frustratingly useless character. So Pieces of Her was a mess, but Girl Forgotten, which is kind of the sequel, it follows the main character a couple of years in the future, was actually really good. It actually totally redeemed Pieces of Her for me in my opinion. Can you read Girl Forgotten without reading Pieces of Her? Yes, you can. And I probably would recommend it. If you're a purist and you definitely want to read Pieces of Her first, go for it. I mean, you may have a completely different opinion of it than I do. It just didn't work for me, but Girl Forgotten did. But just in general though, Karen Slaughter is such an amazing author. And so I had to go ahead and recommend these books here, even though Pieces of Her was not the best. I do have to recommend her just because she is so phenomenal. And if you have not read from her before, I don't think it could hurt to give one of these stories a try to see if her writing works for you. I do also want to recommend Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier. Jennifer Hillier is definitely also becoming a auto buy thriller suspense author for me. She is another one that is not really afraid to put her characters through some nonsense. And this is one that I really enjoyed. It's about a woman who is suspected of killing her husband and you are following her as she's arrested what happens after she is released but there's also a past perspective too that kind of ties in with the present and I just thought it was ultimately pretty well done it's not my favorite by Jennifer Hillier that I've read so far but it was still such a solid read and it is definitely a fantastic introduction to Jennifer Hillier if you have not read from her before and the last one that I want to go ahead and recommend in the thriller category is A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham so this follows a main character who when she was young six girls went missing in her hometown and her father actually ended up confessing to the crimes. So you can only imagine what kind of impact that had on her, right? And then 20 years later, some similar things start to happen in her hometown. And so she kind of returns to figure out what is going on because there are bigger implications if the wrong person was thrown in prison, right? So this has that reluctant hometown trope that I really, really enjoy. There are some definitely some big secrets that are revealed in this. And I just thought that ultimately Stacey Willingham did a great job. I'm currently in the middle of her other book, All the Dangerous Things, and I'm enjoying it so far. So we're going to see if I enjoyed that one as much as this one. All the Dangerous Things is still available on book of the month as well. I just haven't fully read it yet, so I can't recommend it, but they are both there if you are interested. All right, y'all, that is it. Those are some of the books that are still available on book of the month that I highly recommend considering adding to your box if you have not already. Now, obviously this is not meant to be a comprehensive list of recommendations. There are plenty of categories on book of the month that I completely skipped over just because I don't typically read them and I have no recommendations. So if you are a book of the month subscriber and there are 
books that I did not talk about in this video that you feel are really worth the read, please feel free to comment those down below and let everybody know. I'm sure that they would be very, very grateful for those recommendations. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I can do. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.